Well, today is May 1st. I just now opened the marsh back up today. I figured it was going to be 100 people down here wanting to go fishing. So, so far, <laughs> I'm the only one with one other truck here. Other than that, I'm the only one here. The tide's going out. Low tide's a couple hours. Since I hadn't been fishing in a while, I didn't really care. I was going fishing. And uh, the people that had been asking about uh, pole anchors. Here's my homemade one. You got a stainless steel eye bolt. This cord runs up underneath the front of the boat up there under my bow. And I got a clothesline retrieval line up there. So the line on it never actually hits in the water. Or it doesn't go up in there, so I don't have to worry about the salt water messing it up. This just slides down through here. It's all made out of PVC. This electrical conduit with wooden dolls and uh, sand in it to give it some weight and a little bit of stability. Still not as stiff. I'd rather have a fiberglass rod, but I hesitated buying one from WW Granger and I went back to buy them and they, I didn't see them on their website anymore so they must have quit quit carrying them they were pretty cheap compared to the ones you buy at the kayak places <laughs> where they want 75 or 100 dollars for it anyway that's how it works and i sit up here i just pull my cord it goes up drop it down so i can say it's cheap easy to make works good I have another anchor in here also that I can put out and hold the boat sideways in the current or if the water's too deep for this I can uh, put it on there a little Suzuki's working good I got to crank it up since I hadn't had it running for a while I'm gonna crank it up before I leave the land in case I get out there and have to crank it it's a whole lot easier to crank it standing here than it would be out there in the in the water and looks like we got some mullet swimming around in here. I was hoping they'd be here. These are mullet or some little minnows. Yeah, there's like Latino like minnows. I was hoping there'd be some big mullet out there. I might throw my net one time just to see. Try to get some bait. Like I said, I hadn't been here. Cause they just opened the, the landing back up today, so I hadn't been here in a while. So. There's starting to be some mullet around last time I was here. I believe that looks like it might be a uh, shrimp <laughs> jumping across there. That's what it looks like. But what do I know? <laughs> I hope everybody made it through the little crisis okay. Well, let me, this is usually a good spot right out in here to throw the net. So. Let me toss it out there one time and see what happens. Probably won't catch anything, but who knows. Let's see, yeah. I don't see no flashes. Yeah. Looks like it's gonna be plug fishing again today. We do a lot of plug fishing in the wintertime. <laughs> kind of hard to catch bait a lot of times in the winter time as much as I go fishing I'd go broke buying it at the bait shop every day I ain't gonna make one more cast and I'm going fishing heck with all this with the wind blowing it makes it hard to see the schools of mullet swimming when the wind's not blowing you can see them swimming along the top of the water and you just throw right on them but but the water all ripply like this, you can't really see them unless it's a really big school making a big splash. But let's see. It's a little bit chilly out here this morning. I might have to put my little jacket on. I think it was like 52 degrees, 53, something like that. In my truck, what it said. 
and the wind blowing air on the water. Kind of chilly feeling. Yeah, that's a little old small school of minnows or shrimp, baby shrimp or something out there swimming around. So. Yeah, put this thing up. Okay, if I catch any fish, I turn the camera on. Otherwise, that's about it right now. I'm going to show you the problem with this boat launch. As you can see, it's just a flat marsh here. There's no boat ramp. The gradual slope. And without backing my truck all the way out here under the water, that's the best you can do is, and the water's not even up to the boat. So you have to push it off, and then when I come to launch it, I have to walk out and get on my platform. That's why I put this flat deck on here. But the regular rail runners, you know, I had to go all the way out to the end of the boat in the water, the end of the trailer in the water, to get up knee deep or so in water or more. Here, I just step right here and, and up on the, the flat floor and just walk out there and grab the end of the boat. You know, I push the boat out with the rope, pull it back in. Works a whole lot better. I stay a lot drier now, even though I still have to get out in the water year round, even in the wintertime, come out here and walk in the water. So, that's just the way it is. And uh, I had to clean the rust off of that. It's about to quit working where I hadn't been in the water in a while. Uh, since the tide's going out, the boat's going to go to the left. As soon as I push it off, current can get pretty swift as it's going out here. It's been going out a little while, so at low tide, all that water's gone. The only thing at low tide is a little old creek between here and where that bird's standing. It's about 10 or 20 feet wide, and it runs uh, maybe 75, 100 yards up there, and that's about it. Take my pole anchor. Drop it down right there, and that kind of helps hold it. Till I can go park the truck and come back. Okay. That's how you load the twin trailer in the marsh. As you can see, there's my trailer. The flat part deck is not even in the water. And I can back my truck on out and cover it in salt water. But I don't really want to do that. So that's it till we catch some fish, hopefully. Uh, the wading bird out there just caught him one. That's a good sign. That's a good bait size fish there. Oh, gone. There's a porpoise right there. He was just raising cane over there catching him some bait, some food. There he is. He's he just strolling around now. You don't see him come this far up in the little creek here that often. Time or two. Maybe he was just a stirring up a ruckus over there just now. And them crab guy done put his traps out here in the middle of this low and narrow creek. There he goes. You can see him. I hope I got my camera right. You can see him flapping his tail, injuring the, the bait. And he feeds on it. It feels good to be back on the water again. Just left the boat landing. It's, it's just right there. Heading out here to the big creek. And back around a few holes there to used to catch some fish in. And that's the purpose. He's getting pretty close there now. There was one here last year. He'd follow me around. He'd come swimming underneath the boat. I got a couple of videos on it. But he'd swim right underneath the boat. The boat would just rock when he went under the boat. That's how close he was to it. There you go. There he is. Be real quiet and watch him here. There he is.
couldn't tell for sure in the mirror and the window of the truck whether my camera's aimed straight or not. You know, it might be too low. I don't know. I'm gonna ease out of here. Try not to speak. I mean, we kind of follow him out and get a little bit of fun video. Maybe we can get a good, good shot of him playing here in a minute. Or not playing, but feeding. shallow water there you can see it I guess you can see it ripples there going up in the little shallows over there around the bait up in the shallow and ambush them I don't like some good sized mullet over there just popped the water I should have put my net and left it in the boat I took it out trying to fish with him swimming around in here. <laughs> well, I ended up, didn't catch any fish. Uh, wind blowing pretty good. Picked up blowing pretty hard, actually. Hadn't had a bite. So I figured I'm going to the house. Got down here, so that was good. Okay, trying to get back down here to the creek. Got clam diggers everywhere. Got to turn my camera off. That's it till tomorrow.